What did Wizards of the Coast think was going to happen with the creation of this set, Duskmorn? Because I'll tell you right now, a lot of players have a lot of questions. Did Wizards of the Coast honestly think that players weren't going to notice? That they wouldn't notice those similarities? Wait, I've gone too far in the video. We haven't started this part yet. We're still at the intro. Welcome back, everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thank you again for hanging out with me on my channel today for another video. Today we're discussing Duskmorn. The good, the bad, the ugly, however you want to look at it. There's a lot going on with this particular product from players not buying that much seal to overwhelming demand for singles and some images and imagery from the set that are quite questionable. So let's just dive into this. Let's go over right away and take a look at what we're talking about. Now, when you looked at this card, unidentified hover ship. I'll be honest, I look at mechanics first and artwork second, but I looked at it and said, hey, it's a flying vehicle, okay, and it enters and you exile a, a target creature with toughness five or less, that's pretty unique. There's ways of lowering and getting bigger creatures gone, that's awesome. And of course, when it leaves the battlefield, the exiled owner gets to manifest dread, which could just be a you know small creature or some scary card, but that's not bad. It avoids and evades a lot of things. This is a decent card. It really reminded me of the second card I'm showing you, which is the Skyclave Apparition. And that, of course, is from Zendikar Rising. A lot of similarities, a little bit different. You don't get a big beastie creature at the end when you exile things. But there's a lot going on with the card that I did enjoy. But that artwork is ridiculous. Okay? This is not Signs. This is not 2001. This is not what this is supposed to be about. And I don't care if it's supposed to be a jellyfish, a vehicle, or a spaceship. This is something that doesn't fit well with me and a lot of people agreed okay a lot of people feel that same way where it's like the artwork's having a hard time meeting up where this set should be and you almost feel like it should have a different name different artwork but the mechanics are there now we're not done of course let's check out the next one here this is the ghostly dancers now i like this card too it's a two white three generic which is really high casting cost and standard but i think this was meant for commander it's a two five with flying and it is a spirit when Ghostly Dancers enters, return a target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand or unlock a locked door or room you control. I don't care about the room mechanic. It's not going to hold water for years. But bringing back enchantments, that's interesting, okay? That's interesting. It also has Eerie. Whenever an enchantment you control enters and whenever you fully unlock a room, you get a 3-1 spirit that has flying. Guys, I like the token. I like the flying. This is a decent card, okay? Now, I understand basically it's going to be for Commander, or maybe if you get it in your pre-release, this is a pretty big bomb card to pull. Now, I noticed similarities, of course, with reserve list cards like the Academy Rector. Now, the Academy Rector is, of course, a 1 white 3 generic for a 1 2, but it says when the Academy Rector is put into a graveyard from play, you may remove it from the game, and if you do, you search your library for an enchantment card that you get to put into play. Now, Enchantments have become a really big thing over the last couple of years. Let's let's not hedge our bets here. It has been a big thing since Theros, where we have all these enchantment creatures now, all kinds of crazy ways of using enchantments, and that's why cards like Sarah Sanctum from the reserve list really started to rise up and go somewhere. And we've also seen all kinds of spikes with a whole series of cards from the reserve list, as well as just some old school cards that of course could be reprinted. But these cards are being connected to new cards, and that includes Duskmore. Now, when you notice the similarity of something like an Academy Rector from the reserve list, a $50, $60 card, but it lets you go get any enchantment, well, that means any new powerful enchantment they create, the Academy Rector will let you go and get if you're building it with Commander. And then with a card like the Ghostly Dancers, even if they get rid of the enchantment you've brought with your Rector, well, you can go back and get it with the Ghostly Dancers. There's a lot of connective tissue here to help build better constructed decks. And I'm sure there's a multitude of other cards that are probably going to be dropped in my comment section talking about this and how many cards there could be that are better or, or more adaptive. I understand all that. I'm just giving you some kind of notes on what's going on out there because these similarities don't take away from the game. They just add a little bit of synergy. So let's take a look at the next card here because this is getting kind of insane. So our next card I want to talk about is the Rendmaw Creaking Nest. We'll get to the Scarecrow from the Dark in just a second. So the Rendmaw is a 3 generic, 1 black, and 1 green for a 5-5 five, five legendary artifact creature, Scarecrow. It has menace, it has reach. But listen to this part. When Rendmaw, the Creaking Nest, enters and whenever you play a card with two or more card types, each player creates a tapped 
2-2 Blackbird Creature token with flying. The tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. In case you forgot what goaded means, it means they attack each combat if able and attack a player other than you if able, which is kind of insane, which means they've got to go hit all your opponents and stuff with a whole bunch of flying crows and stuff. That's a nutty card. It's very powerful. It's actually kind of creepy looking in the artwork. I can appreciate this part for Duskmorn. I like it. Now, I'm showing you the original Scarecrow because this is the first Scarecrow I ever remember seeing in Magic the Gathering. This was a 2-2 two, two for 5. And, of course, it's an artifact creature that said 6 and tap until end of turn. All combat damage done to you by flying creatures is reduced to 0. So you can also understand how insane this can kind of be when you start building a Scarecrow deck. And the idea that these cards are going to come around again really shouldn't come as a surprise. Now, the Scarecrow, of course, is from the dark. It is on the reserve list, but it's like a 50 cent card. It's not overly expensive to buy the card. But when you see these cool Scarecrows coming out in Duskmorn and the idea of the creepy artwork, you are getting a certain level of attachment to players and the nostalgia factor of Scarecrows as a kid and scary things from movies that really will appeal to a certain niche audience that's going to have them buying a lot of these cards. Wizards of the Coast knows their audience well, but then they kind of fall off the, the boat and get waterlogged. I don't know. Take a look at this next one here, guys. And I'm making fun of this. So this is Rip the Spawn Hunter, or as I like to call it, the, the next Ghostbuster. You can see here that the, the imagery to me looks the same. It's somebody blasting out ectoplasmic things like the particle accelerators from Ghostbusters. So is it a Ghostbuster set? Or is it a creepy, neither world, fifth dimension type thing? They have a real identity crisis here, don't they? So the Rip Spawn Hunter is a 4-4 legendary creature, human survivor, for two generic, one green and one white. This card's a 4-4, but it also has survival. At the beginning of your second main phase, if Rip Spawn Hunter is tapped, reveal the top X cards of your library where X is its power. Put any number of creature and or vehicle cards with different powers from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This is where, to me, things really fell off the rails with Duskmorn. It's not really a creepy set. It's like a Ghostbuster wannabe. It almost made me feel like they were going to do a Ghostbuster set but they changed their minds. A lot of the artwork I'm seeing reminds me of Ghostbusters from the cartoon show back in the 80s. It reminds me of the recent films and movies we've seen with the same kind of context. I mean, was this supposed to be a Ghostbuster set that just didn't work out? Did we step into some, some broken set of slush art and crazy things that they kind of just piled in to fill the set up? I don't know. I just know that this set seems to not know what it is. I know a lot of other content creators have also been commenting on this, and I was trying to avoid it until I started seeing some of these cards really building up. But then I see the really cool, scary cards, which I was hoping to see. The the artwork and the and the crazy dolls and stuff, that gets me. It's, it's oh, that's kind of creepy. Oh, I like those, yeah. And then I see a Ghostbuster. Where's your trap? Where, where, where's Ecto-1? Where's Slimer? Guys, you got to comment on this. You got to help me out. And... Are you seeing what I see? Is this just my imagination? Because to me, it looks like Wizards of the Coast failed to provide a good, strong, scary, cohesive set that they could have given us. It totally could have happened. It just seems like they went halfway and stopped or they meshed a couple of sets together and called it a day. Or they had leftover artwork to use up from something that didn't pan out in IP or something. I don't know. I keep thinking Ghostbusters, guys. I don't know what happened. But this all reminds me of Ghostbusters. Either way, you guys are going to let me know in the comment section because Duskmore does have an amazing array of cards and good card mechanics that a lot of players are going to utilize. But some of this artwork to me just looks ridiculous for what it is and other parts look amazing. I can't wait to read your comments. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. And of course, don't forget this weekend, we have the top 10 videos. We have your top 10 selling cards on Saturday and the reserve list top 10 on Sunday. And anyone who's made it this far in the video, I think I'll have my new internet installed on Saturday. And we, we made it to 24,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, everyone. Blowing my mind. Tried to stay calm the whole video. Think I did an okay job. Guys, what can I say? It's because of the audience, because of the fans of the channel. Thanks again for being part, man. Thanks for being here. Um, we're now on our way to 25K, the halfway mark. It's causing a meltdown in my body. Mm. See you soon. When there's something strange. And you, yeah, I know. You guys get where I'm going with this. Welcome to the end of the video. These are the patrons, guys. The patrons you see here are the supporters of this channel. 
They're the ones who put out their wallet every month to make sure this channel stays alive and I appreciate them every single day. Whether you're a YouTube membership member or one of my patrons or a viewer, guys, thanks again for being here. Have a great day, everyone. I know, I almost went down and got my Ghostbusters toys out to put in the backdrop, but I held myself up because this is a ramble jamble. Ramble, jamble. And let's be honest. This set had massive potential to me when I started seeing the spoilers come out. I was curious to see where they would take it. But the more I see, the more I kept, and I keep thinking Ghostbusters, cartoon show, same characters to me. It, this is wrong. They could have gone dark. They could have gone scary and real gothic kind of horror from like the old days. And I think it would have worked, man. Look how creepy the dark set is. Look at that scarecrow card, man. That's like... Coraline type stuff with the button eyes, right? Oh, I think they missed the potential. Anyway, thanks a lot for hanging out. Thanks for being here. Oh. <laughs> what, you don't want to see me dance? Get your kids over here. Go go get them. Get the pets. Get the kids. They want to see the Moxman dance. I'll do it one more time. Okay, everybody. I know I can't help myself. I'm being silly tonight. It's late at night. Gotta drink some coffee. Gotta go to bed. Work the next day. Guys, have an awesome one.